Day three of the Russian invasion of Ukraine to witnesses an action-packed drama as Ukraine claim of derailing the Russia plans with its forces, halting Kremlin push to capture Kyiv. The first Air India evacuation flight depart from Romania capital Bucharest on Saturday afternoon for Mumbai with 219 Indian national as Indian government step up its proceeding to evacuate hundreds of stranded Indian students from war zone of Ukraine. India on Saturday abstained on a U.S.-sponsored United Nations Security Council resolution on Russian aggression against Ukraine. New Delhi says dialogue is the only answer to settling differences and disputes. Road condition in the commercial hub of Nagaland Dimapur continues to be in a deplorable state even after continuous appeal of its residents. NLTV ground report unearthed pathetic road condition across the city. Hong Kong Kong Sands of Telenjim Dimapur celebrates completion of 50 years of on Saturday. Former Chief Minister of Dr. S.C. Jamir graced the occasion as a special guest and Reverend Dr. L. Kari Longcher as the speaker of the program. Hello and welcome to Naglan TV. This is your anchor, Ravinya Lama, and you're watching English Prime Time. Now, news in details. Day 3 of the Russian invasion of Ukraine has witnessed an action-packed day as Russia and Ukraine both are showing no sign of cooling off. While Russia are on the verge of conquering capital Kyiv, Ukraine is claiming that derailing the Russia plans, its forces have had halted the Kremlin push to capture Kyiv. The battle of Kyiv intensifies. Invading Russian forces closed in on Ukraine's capital. Top air strikes on cities and military bases around Ukraine. Three kids among 198 Ukrainians killed in two days, according to Ukraine government. 35, including two children killed in heavy fighting overnight in Kyiv. Ukraine claims over killing 1,000 Russian troops need ammo, not a ride. Ukraine president rejects U.S. evacuation offer. War has returned to Europe. French President Emmanuel Macron. As the Russian invasion of Ukraine has entered day three, the Battle of Kiev has been intensified with both the countries engaged in brutal warfare. Invading Russian forces have closed in on Ukraine's capital on Saturday in an apparent encircling movement after a barrage of airstrikes on cities and military bases around the country. Many areas including high-rise in Kyiv have been hit by Russian missiles damaging the capital and killing many. According to Ukraine's health minister Viktor Lyashko, 198 Ukrainians including three children have been killed in two days during the attack. According to the mayor of Kyiv, Vitaly Klitschko, 35 people including two children have been killed in the heavy fighting overnight in Kyiv. Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky's advisor Mikhailo Podolyak said on Saturday that small groups of Russian force tried to infiltrate Kyiv and engaged in fighting with the Ukrainian troops. He said that Russia wants to seize control of the Ukrainian capital and destroy the country's leadership. But he also said that the Russian military has failed to make any gains and the Ukrainian forces are controlling the situation in Kyiv. According to reports, Ukrainian soldiers repulsed a Russian attack in the capital. While Ukraine claims killing over 1,000 Russian troops, Russians hit back saying that its troops have knocked out 211 military infrastructure facilities in Ukraine. In another development, Russia claimed to have seized Melitopol, 
According to the Russia's news agencies, Russian forces captured the southeastern Ukrainian city of Melitopol on Saturday. Earlier, Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky took a swipe at the US and said, we are defending our country alone. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has declined a US request to evacuate Kyiv, citing the fight is here. I need ammunition, not a ride. Zelensky has warned of further attacks, stating that Russian troops will storm into the capital city of Kyiv, which has been hit by airstrikes as clashes continue on the outskirts. As the moment of airing this report, another significant development on Saturday has come, in which French President Emmanuel Macron has stated that the war between Ukraine and Russia would be a long one with lasting consequences in Europe. Blaming Russian President Vladimir Putin, Macron said war has returned to Europe. This was chosen unilaterally by President Putin with a tragic humanitarian situation. Well, it seems the Russia versus Ukraine war is not coming to an end soon anytime, and sanctions on Moscow or a worldwide criticism of Russia has not tamed down Vladimir Putin's aggression. Ukraine is burning, and there is no doubt, unless peace is restored in the Eastern Europe, it is going to bring severe consequences to the entire world. International Desk, Nagaland TV. Hundreds of stranded Indian students have been successfully evacuated from war zone Ukraine by the Indian embassies amid Russian invasion efforts in the country. According to sources, the students were evacuated to Romania amid high security in a bus with an Indian flag outside the vehicles and a banner reading Indian student. The first year India's Evacuation flight departed from Romania capital Bucharest on Saturday afternoon for Mumbai with 219 Indian nationals. Earlier, the Air India plan from Mumbai landed in the Romania capital Bucharest on Saturday morning to evacuate the stranded Indians. Meanwhile, Indian nationals who reached the Ukraine-Romania border by road have also been taken to Bucharest by the Indian government officials so that they can be evacuated in the Air India flight. It is to be mentioned that Air India 1943 which is being operated on Boeing 787 aircraft can carry 256 passengers at a time and that it will operate more flights on Saturday to Bucharest and Hungarian capital Budapest to evacuate Indian stranded in Ukraine. And as we know that the attack has been attacked on the next day, we have evacuated the first day in the evacuated the first day. Thanks to the Indian Embassy in Ukraine, Romania and our Indian government. The Hajjus University is the one who has been here. Thank you. Nobody knows the current situation in Ukraine. We and our parents were very scared about our safety in Ukraine. In the Indian Embassy in Ukraine and the Indian Embassy in Romania have helped us to come uh, to evacuate us from uh, the current situation and to uh, move us back to our homeland India safely. The moment we have arrived in Bucharest, the Indian Embassy of Romania is with us from that point till now and they are taking care of everything that we don't face any difficulty in this uh, whole travelling and India on Saturday abstains on a U.S.-sponsored United Nations Security Council resolution that deplores in the strongest term the Russia aggression against Ukraine, with New Delhi saying dialogues is the only answer to settling differences and disputes and voicing regrets that the path of diplomacy was given up. Explaining its vote, India permanent representative at the U.N., T.S. Tirumurti said that India is deeply disturbed by the recent turn of development in Ukraine. He further said that India also urges that all efforts are met for the immediate cessation of violence and hostilities. Meanwhile, Russia on Friday vetoed a UN Security Council resolution that deplored in the strongest term the country's aggression against Ukraine. The resolution had also demanded the immediate withdrawal of its troops. 11 of the Council's 15 members voted in favor of the motion. China, India and the UAE abstained. The draft resolution, which was co-written by the United States and Albania, is now expected to be taken up by the 193 members UN General Assembly. Mr. President, India is deeply disturbed by the recent turn of developments in Ukraine. 
We urge that all efforts are made for the immediate cessation of violence and hostilities. Mr. President, India is deeply disturbed by the recent turn of developments in Ukraine. India's abstention from the vote on the draft resolution with deploring in strongest term Russia operation inside Ukraine sought to strike between its crucial partnership with Moscow and its Western allies. Notably, Russia used its veto to kill the draft resolution, which was co-sponsored by the United States and Albania and supported by more than 40 other members of the General Assembly. Meanwhile, two strong powers, China and United Arab Emirates, to abstain. The U.S. envoy to the U.N. said after the vote that there is no middle ground and that, is would, and that it would be taken next to the General Assembly, where Russia has no veto. That is where India's next challenge will come. Explaining the stance, India's permanent representative to the U.N., T.S. Tiramuti, said that India is deeply disturbed by the recent turn of development in Ukraine and that dialogue is the only answer to settling differences and disputes, however daunting that may appear at this moment. He further added that it is a matter of regrets that the part of diplomacy was given up. Tiramuti added that for all these reasons, India has chosen to abstain on this resolution. India is deeply disturbed by the recent turn of developments in Ukraine. We urge that all efforts are made for the immediate cessation of violence and hostilities. No solution can ever be arrived at at the cost of human lives. All member states need to honor these principles in finding a constructive way forward. Minister for External Affairs Jay Shankar took down the Twitter to share the evacuation process of Indian nationals, nationalists from Ukraine. He stated that they are making a progress and that they are working on the ground round the clock. He also stated that the first flight to Mumbai with two 19 Indians and nationalists has taken off from Romania. He also mentioned in his tweet that he is personally monitoring the evacuation process. The Indian embassies in Ukraine in the latter statement has advised all Indian citizens stationed at Ukraine to not move to any of the border posts without prior coordination with the government of India officials at border posts and the emergency numbers of the embassies of India, Kiev. As border checkpoints are sensitive at the moment and the embassies is continuously working with the neighboring countries for coordination evacuation of Indian citizens. The Indian embassies has also notified that it has been difficult to help those Indian nationals who have reached border checkpoint without prior information. Ukraine Foreign Minister Dimitro Kuliba on Saturday said that France has agreed to supply military equipment to Kyiv as well as ban Russia from SWIFT international banking system. Kuliba held a telephonic conversation with French counterpart Zint Yves Lidriand and urged the EU to immediately introduce the third package of sanctions on Russia amid the growing tension between Moscow and Kyiv. Kuliba on Friday also spoke with German, Belgian and Italian counterpart Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky on Friday discussed the sanctioned defense assistance and an anti-war coalition with U.S. President Joe Biden. Furthermore, Biden on Friday said that the North Atlantic Treaty the organization NATO will maintain its open door to those European states who share its value and who seek to join the alliance. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky posted a video filmed outside his office in Kyiv, ple pledging to fight as Russian forces storm towards the capital. In the video, President gives hope to the Ukrainians and assures them that he is there for his people. He stated that the Ukrainians will not give up weapons and they will defend the states because weapons are their truth. He further stated they are determined and their truth is that Ukraine is the land, their country and the children of Ukraine will protect Ukraine. He ended the video by saying glory to Ukraine. Доброго ранку. Всім доброго ранку, українці. Зараз в мережі дуже багато з'явилось фейкової інформації, що немов я закликаю складати зброю 
нашу армию и иде эвакуация. Значит так, я тут, никакой зброи мы не складем, будем защищать нашу державу, потому что наша зброя – это наша правда. Наша правда в том, что это наша земля, наша страна, наши дети, и мы все это будем защищать. Вот и все. Вот это и есть то, что я хотел вам сказать. Слава Украине! Всем добрый вечер. Лидер фракции тут, глава Офиса Президента тут, премьер-министр Шмагаль тут, подаляк тут, президент тут. Все мы тут, наши військові тут, граждане общества тут, все мы тут. Защищаем нашу независимость, нашу державу. И так будет и далее. Слава нашим защитникам. Слава. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has asked Russian President Vladimir Putin for negotiating negotiation to stop the dying as Russia forces struck Kiev, the country's capital. Meanwhile, the Kremlin, Kremlin has said that President Vladimir Putin is ready to send a delegation to Belarus for talk with Ukraine as Russia forces close in on the Ukrainian capital Kiev on the second day of Moscow invasion. Notably, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said on Friday the Russian leader is ready to send a high-level delegation for talks with a Ukrainian delegation to Belarusian capital Minsk, which has previously hosted a round of peace talks over the Ukraine crisis. Also, according to the Chinese Foreign Ministry, Russian President Vladimir Putin told his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping on Friday that Moscow is willing to hold high-level negotiations with Ukraine. Meanwhile, Xi also called for negotiations between Russia and Ukraine in a phone call with Putin on Friday as Moscow lead forces continue attack on military and civilian targets in Ukraine on the second day of the invention that has prompted global condemnation. Road conditions in the commercial hub of Nagaland, Dimapur, continue to be a deplorable state even after several appeals met by the citizens of the state to the state government to look into the matter. Nagaland TV team on Saturday visited Durga Mandir, Blue Hill Station and Dobinala area of Dimapur to inspect the road conditions in the respective location. During the investigation, it was found that the road was still not being reconstructed and is still to look like a river bat than a proper road mat for tar. We're all, we're, we're, are all the funds for development going? How long will government ignore plea of the people? Let's have a look. The Ompang Kong Senso Talonjem to Dimapur celebrated the completion of 50 years on Saturday. Notably, the Golden Jubilee celebration was held at Sandand Riju from 10 a.m. onwards. The theme of the program was based on Ora Penju. Meanwhile, the special guest of the program was Dr. A.C. Jamir and Reverend Dr. L. Kari Longchir as the speaker of the program. <laughs> While speaking at a Golden Jubilee celebration of Ong Pang Kong Senso Talonjem Dimapur, Dr. A.C. Jamir shared that Nagas are asleep. Their heart is at unrest and filled with fear. Hence, Jamir invoked the crowd to stay awake unlike others and to stick with truth. He urged the crowd to live an impactful life since they have already claimed the goal of 50 years. He also questioned the 
crowd whether they would choose to live in the past or live in the present and think about the coming future. He urges to remove the attitude of blaming one another and have a look at the world, India and Nagaland situation as it keeps growing. Jamir also highlighted on the outlook of Indian policy over Southeast Asian country instead of Western countries and the development that India brought about in its political including upgradation of its places and people. As a matter of fact, this development in about 15 to 20 years will change the whole Northeast India. Jamir also urged the people to set the mentality of serving the state at their best and to push Nagaland forward along with unity of the our tribe. Nagaland Home Department on Friday informed that the pre-primary section of school in the state will start offline classes with up to 50% attendance with effect from March 1. The notification further informed that the attendance of any student for the physical offline classes would be with parental consent only. It also informed that hostel for pre-primary section, if existing, in any school will remain closed. It further mentioned that reopening of any school to would be subjected to all the teachers and non-teaching staff of the school concern of being fully vaccinated, taking both doses against COVID-19. If not vaccinated, the person concerned should have been tested negative for COVID-19 through either RT-PCR, TrueNet or Sibinel once in every 15 days. The notification also stated that reopening of school would be subjected to adherence to all the provisions of the standing operating procedure SOP on the preventive measure to contain the spread of COVID-19 for physical offline classes in the pre-primary section. Meanwhile, the order also directed school to immediately inform the nearest medical facility hospital clinic or call the state's or district helpline in case any student teachers or any personnel related to the school development symptoms. The notification also stated that reopening of school to would be subjected to adherence to all the provisions of the standing operating procedure SOP on the preventive measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 for physical offline classes in the pre-primary section. Dimapur New Market has landed in controversy over a fish wagging. Fraudulent cases as a citizen of Dimapur buying commodities has accused a fish vendor of cheating her on 3 to 4 kg of eel, eel fish. The individual has claimed that she bought 9 kilos of eel, but upon the reaching home and weighing the item herself, she found that around 3 to 4 kilos were missing, to which she filed a complaint and phoned NLTV to further investigate the matter. Every week. Uh, according to the price hike, Abunigan bra chart day, Aro Abunigan chart day do Abunigan bra social media so the public ke pack kore, Aro ido cholai thake. Koli bi Amigan huna isab the complain that pishi dukan dar gan bra ido laga Abunigan laga price chart to uh, follow no kore. Nia bi complain hai. To ido laga Abunigan upor de GMC gan bra bi ido laga upor de action gan nole business kora gan ke uh, kundo. Tarika 
Ina cuma uja galdi uja. Itu tu kami kan ina komplain public komplain lagi juga. Kami kan akhirnya office telo jangan kita jual gula sih terus berjuang. The Mizoram Unit BJP on Friday submitted a memorandum to State Governor Dr. Hari Babu Kambarapati, urging him to impose a precedent rule due to the alleged lawlessness in the states under the Mizor National Front government, headed by Chief Minister Zoram Tanga. Notably, MNF is a member of BJP Lead Northeast Democratic Alliance and an ally ally of the National Democratic Alliance at the center, but the party does not work with the BJP in Mizoram. In its memorandum, the BJP alleged that there was a total absence of good governance in the states, resulting in misuse of public money through unfair means. The memorandum said there was a rampant corruption at every level of administration, where ministers and high officials of the states are suspected to be involved in various dubious business deals. Assam Chief Minister Himanda Biswa Sharma on Saturday spoke to the External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar about the safety of Indian students in Ukraine. The Chief Minister stated that Jay Shankar informed him that the Ministry of External Affairs is working closely with the Indian embassies for evacuation of students and residents, including the students from Assam. He also took down to Twitter to reassure all the parents to have faith in the government of India. Tokyo Olympic silver medalist Mirabai Chanu won gold at the Singapore International Weightlifting Tournament on Friday and has qualified for Birmingham to Commonwealth Games. Chanu lifted 86 kg in her third attempt and 105 kg in clean and jerk, while Jessica Siwaktanko of Australia lifted 167 kg to claim silver and Ellie Keskandra Inglebert of Malaysia lifted 165 kg and won bronze. Janu stated that it was a challenge for her to participate in a new weight category while happy to have qualified for the Commonwealth Games. Meanwhile, Birmingham CWG is set to be held from July 28 to August 8. The Union Cabinet Chair by Prime Minister Narendra Modi has approved the national to roll out of Santa Sakti scheme, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, with a budget of Rs 1,600 crore for five years. The National Health Authority, NHA, will be the implementing agency of the Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission. The central government on Saturday stated that digital health solutions across the healthcare ecosystem have proven to be uh, immensely beneficial over the years, with Govind Arogya set to and e Sanjivani and the ABDMs. Citizens will be able to create their ABBA Ayushman Bharat Health account numbers to which the digital health records can be linked. This will enable creation of health records for individuals across various health care providers. The mission is expected to improve equ equitable access to quality health care by encouraging use of technologies such as telemedicine and enabling national portability of health services. साथियों कोरोना वैक्सीनेशन में कोविन जैसे प्लेटफॉर्म के माध्यम से हमारी डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी का लोहा पूरी दुनिया ने माना है आयुष्मान भारत डिजिटल मिशन कंज्यूमर और हेल्थ केयर प्रोवाइडर के बीच एक आसान इंटरफेस उपलब्ध कराता है इससे देश में उपचार पाना और देना दोनों बहुत आसान हो जाएंगे इतना ही नहीं ये भारत के क्वालिटी और एफोर्डेबल हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम की ग्लोबल एक्सेस भी आसान बनाएगा इससे मेडिकल टूरिज्म बढ़ेगा और देशवासियों के लिए इनकम अपॉर्चुनिटीज बढ़ेगी इस वर्ष के बजट में इस मिशन को सशक्त करने के लिए आयुष्मान भारत डिजिटल मिशन के नाम से एक ओपन प्लेटफॉर्म की बात की गई है इस प्रकार के नए कदमों से स्कोप और इम्पैक्ट पर 
हमें गंभीरता से चर्चा करनी होगी Continuing his second day of visit, President Ramnath Kovin on Saturday visited Kaziranga National Park and Tiger Reserve and took a jeep safari at the Bogori Ranch. During his two-day stay in the park, he will view a photo and archival exhibition on conservation trail. There, besides a discussing various government initiatives to project to protect the farm forests. Thousands of people thronged to road to a get a glimpse of the president after he landed in nearby Bokakat town by a special flight of the Indian Army from Tezpur. In fact, breaking the protocols, president was seen getting off his vehicles to greet the public in front of Bokakat Higher Secondary School. Upon his arrival, President Kovind was greeted by Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sharma and Agriculture Minister Atul Bora. Special cultural performances were performed to welcome the president and his family. After a special Spending the night at Assam Police Guest House in Kaziranga National Park on Saturday night, Kovin and his family will take an elephant safari on Sunday morning. Earlier in the day, President Ramnath Kovin addressed the 19th Convocation of Tezpur University. During his two-day visit to Assam, President Ramnath Kovin loaded the notice for focusing Focusing on agriculture activities during his address at the 19th Convocation of Tezpur University, President Kovin said that it is heartening to note that the states in the notice give high priority to organic farming while emphasizing, emphasizing the role of education system. He further said that Tezpur University can play a major role in branding and marketing of agriculture produce of notice. While on the issues of girls' Outperforming boys in academic precedent highlighted that such excellence displayed by women is a reflection of India's future as a gender just a nation. Notably, this time 27 girls have big gold medal out out of 47 in Tezpur University. As token of advice for student, Kovin further stressed on the humanity as he said that a human being lives for other human beings. These feelings of compassion for entire humanity should be their guiding principle, keeping some words encouragement. He reminded the student about rich history of Tezpur and its association with rich culture icons like Rup Khonwar, Jyoti Prasad Agarwal, Kalanguru Bishnu Prasad Rava, Nata Surya Pani Sharma, and Bharat Ratna, Dr. Bhupan Hazarika. It is heartening to note that the states in the Northeast give high priority to organic farming. The university can play a major role in branding and marketing of agriculture produce of this season. I am happy to note that the university has received approval under the Prime Minister formalization of micro food processing enterprises scheme for setting up an incubation center to process jet. A person in Bokaka died after being hit by President Ramnath Kovin convoy on Saturday afternoon. As per reports, the disease was identified as Rameshwar Ravidas of the Milanpur area of Bogagat. He was hit by the convoy in front of the JDSG College in Bogagat. Meanwhile, locals claimed that he tried to cross the road for some work but was unaware of the convoy coming his way. One local stated that Das, who tried to cross the road, was first hit by a black SUV and then was run over by two more cars. He was initially injured and after the locals recovered him and brought him to the side of the road, he succumbed to the injuries before any medical help arrived. The incident took place while President of India Ram Nath Kovin was on his way to Kaziranga as a part of his Assam tour. A Ukrainian soldier blew himself up to destroy a bridge in the southern province of Kherson to stop invading Russia tanks from marching ahead. The Ukrainian military has praised the sacrifice of Vitality Skakunt Volodymy Rovich, who, like a hero, stopped the Russian tanks. Notably, Marine Battalion Engineer Volodymyk was deployed to the Hanishek bridge when the Russia tanks entered the area. The brave engineer had volunteered to reach the bridge, which is a key strategy point linking crime. Crimea and mainland Ukraine with mines. As the Russian forces raced towards him, the soldier realized he did not have enough time to set the fuse and to, and to get safety. So he blew himself up and destroyed the bridge.
Indian Army on Saturday felicitated Shkir Arif Khan, who recently participated in Winter Olympics, which was being held in Beijing, China. Notably, Arif Khan was the only Indian at least to participate in the Beijing Winter Olympic 2022 and got 53rd giant slalom. Discipline of alpine skiing to which made India proud. Speaking to media, the ski player said, I feel so happy that the Indian Army organized this event. He stated that he had a great journey from being nothing to being an Olympic player. Furthermore, Arif Khan also gave a message that hard work is the main key behind success and also called upon the youth to involve in activities Activities that can inspire other. His family was happy with a felicitation to buy the army. अच्छा लगा हमको यहाँ पे आके इन्होंने हमारे लिए एक प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइज किया था। तो मैं अभी रिसेंटली ओलंपिक से आया कल पहुँचा था कश्मीर। तो आज यहाँ प्रोग्राम देखे बड़ी खुशी है कि इस तरह सम्मानित किया जाता है एथलीट्स को। तो ये पहली बार ऐसा कुछ देखने को मिला। इंडियन आर्मी क्या हाल है? क्या � a lad from Nagaland, Vikas Gupta, who is currently pursuing MBBS in Ukraine, is stuck in Ukraine as the Russia-Ukraine crisis intensifies. In an exclusive footage sent to NLTV, Vikas Gupta, along with a group of fellow Indians, can be seen bo boarding a bus trying to make their way out of Ukraine towards Romania. The group can be heard chanting Bharat Mata Ki Jai and Vande Mataram as they make their way out of Ukraine. Gupta's family in Nagaland have urged Nagaland Chief Minister Nifirio and India Foreign Minister to intervene and ensure safe return of their son and fellow Indians. It is to be notified that Vikas Gupta is a resident of Vihoku village, Newland district. Poland have announced that do not, they do not intend to play their World Cup playoff match next month against Russia following the latter invasion of Ukraine. Meanwhile, the UEFA took one match away from Russia following the invasion but stopped short of kicking them out of qualifying for the World Cup. Notably, Russia is still included alongside Sweden. Czech Republic and Poland in Part B of the European Playoff. Poland is scheduled to take on the Russia on 24 March in Moscow. Should Russia beat Poland, they would meet the winner of Sweden v Czech Republic in a one, one of final five days later to reach the Qatar showpiece. But Polish FAR president Kizari Kulisza has tweeted that his side no longer planned on taking part in the first place. This is all for now. For more updates and information, keep watching Nagaland TV. Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television set as well. For Dimapur viewers, we are on channel number 10 in Global Chapter. And for Kohima and Mokokchung viewers, switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital. For all news and updates, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter.